one, one of the things that I realized very quickly is that the greatest danger, and, I, and in a way I think as much from even over physical threats from outside is, is, your own, is your own mind. If you're not very careful, your mind can be your own worst enemy. You can easily drive yourself into the ground just through self-talk. Managing that has is, is, is got to be the, the, the key point, has got to be the, the first job um, in prison. I did it through meditation. Um, it's something that I started, I, had, I, I was involved with before I went into prison. Um, and when I went into solitary confinement, um, I remember thinking, okay, I can do this. I, I, I know what this is about now. I can, I can cope with this. You've also got to keep physically fit. It's very easy in prison to, to, to do nothing. And once your body physically starts to wind down, I think your mind follows also pretty soon after. And the point is to keep physically fit, mentally fit, and spiritually fit. And how much were those skills ones that you already had? And how many of them were things that you found you had when, when you were tested? Working a lot on the front lines, working with people who've been through extreme situations, having done some of the hostile environments courses, you develop not so much the skills, but a, a, a way of approaching a, a problem, a way of approaching a hostile environment. I've always said that the most valuable thing to come out of the hostile environments courses isn't so much the specific skill sets. It's not necessarily, you know, how to identify um, a, 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 a certain type of mine or the sound of a particular gun or how to approach a checkpoint. It's more the state of mind that you need to have when you approach a hostile environment. And that, that's the way I approached this particular prison. Um, and I realized it was the same kind of mindset that you develop over years of working on front lines everywhere. You, you need to be creative, you need to be disciplined, you need to be thoughtful, you need to be measured in the way that you approach these things. They talk a lot in psychological and military circles and increasingly in journalism circles about resilience, about building resilience. From your experience, where do you think that comes from? Is it something that can be learned or is it something you either have or you don't? I think it's probably a bit of both. Um, you know, some people I think are quite fragile and, and perhaps shouldn't, you know, need, should never go near near front lines, near hostile environments, near places that, where their resilience might be tested. But as I said today, I, don't, I think most people are probably vastly more resilient than they ever imagined. Um, but I also think that there is an awful lot of scope to learn. I mean, these things are strategies. They're, they're tools that you can, you can learn. Um, some people are going to naturally be better at using those tools and, and discovering those tools than others. But I think there are very specific tools that anyone can pick up.